In this video, I'll be going through the 2022 mechanics paper. Question 1. Below is a distance time graph for an America's Cup boat sailing across Waitemata Harbour. Describe the motion of the boat in the four sections. In section A we see a curved line, where our slope is getting steeper and steeper, indicating that the velocity is increasing, which means that our boat is accelerating. In section B we see a straight line upwards, with a slope that isn't changing, meaning that the velocity isn't changing, meaning that we have a constant velocity. In section C we have the same situation, but with an increased slope. In section D we see a flat line across, indicating that the distance isn't changing, which means our boat must be stationary. On the axis below, sketch a speed time graph for this journey. Section C has been done for you. And so we'll start with section A. We see that we start from stationary since our slope there is zero and increase to some particular speed. That speed remains constant throughout section B. We can find this speed by simply finding the slope of this line. As you might recall, slope is rise over run and I can see that our rise is 200 meters and our run is 20 seconds. So our velocity in our section B is going to be 200 divided by 20, which gives us 10 meters per second. And although section C has been done for us, it hasn't given us the scale. So let's find section C as well. Section C rises from 300 to 800, giving us a rise of 500 and the same run of 20 seconds which gives me 25 meters per second. So if this is 25, we can look at our scale and see that it must be going up in fives. So our section B is 10 meters per second throughout before jumping up to our 25. In section A, we accelerate up to our velocity of 10, which on a speed time graph is just a straight line upwards. In section D, our car is stationary, meaning that the speed is zero. On the diagrams below, draw and label arrows to show the size and direction of the horizontal and vertical forces acting on the boat for section A and section B of the boat's journey. In our section A, we're going to have a force upwards from buoyancy, which, because the boat isn't moving up or down, must be equal to the downwards force of gravity. We're going to have a forwards force from the wind, which I'm going to call our thrust force, and a force backwards, which will represent our friction force, both with the air and with the water. Our forwards force must be greater because our boat is accelerating. In section B, we have a constant speed, which means that all these forces must equal. And since our question has asked us specifically to label the arrows, we better make sure that we've been clear as to what each are. Compare and contrast the forces acting in section A with the forces acting in section B. You should consider both the horizontal and vertical forces, the size and direction of these forces, the motion of the boat in both sections, and the net force in both sections. I'm going to approach this by having a column for section A and a column for section B. Starting with our point here, in section A the boat is accelerating. Whereas in section B, it's going at a constant speed. As for the net force, in section A, the net force is forwards, and in section B, the net force is zero. In section A, our horizontal forces are unbalanced, with a greater forwards force, whereas in section B, our horizontal forces are balanced. The vertical forces are balanced in both cases, as there is no vertical acceleration. Question 2. A sandhill has a vertical height of 25 meters. Ariana and her sandboard have a mass of 55 kilograms. Explain the difference between the mass and the weight of Ariana and her sandboard. Given how often this question comes up in these exams, this should be a distinction that you're very ready to make. Mass describes the amount of matter they are made of. Weight is the gravitational force acting upon this mass. Ariana carries her sandboard to the top of a 25 meter hill in 120 seconds. 
The work done to climb this hill is equivalent to the gravitational potential energy she gained when she did. The equation for gravitational potential energy is mgh, where their mass is 55, the acceleration due to gravity is 10, and the height is our 25 meters, which gives me 13,750 joules. Calculate the power that she uses to climb this hill. Power is just our work divided by the time, where our work is our 13,750, and our time is our 120 seconds, which gives me 114.58 watts. Explain how she could lower the power output required to climb to the top of the hill. So let's look at the factors that affected this number. First of all, we have the mass. We can't change the acceleration due to gravity. We can't change the height of the hill, but we can change the duration. If we increase our T down here, then our power is going to decrease. So we have two ways. She could reduce her mass, perhaps by using a lighter board, which would reduce the work. She could also increase her climbing duration, since power is work over time, increasing the duration while keeping the work the same will reduce her power. Ariana rides her sandboard from the top of the 25 meter hill to the bottom. Calculate the gravitational potential energy of Ariana and her sandboard at the top of the hill, which is a generous question for them to ask because we already have. Her speed at the bottom of the hill is 12 meters per second. Calculate the kinetic energy of Ariana and her sandboard at the bottom of the hill. Our equation for kinetic energy is half mv squared, where we know our mass is our 55 kilograms and our velocity is 12, which gives me 3960 joules. Explain the differences between her gravitational potential energy at the top of the hill and her kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill. And so we see that our kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill is much lower than the gravitational potential energy she had at the top. This difference is going to be due to the friction losses between the sand and the board. The kinetic energy is much lower than the gravitational potential energy lost. This difference will be due to some of this energy being converted into heat and sound via the friction between the sand and the board. Question 3. Identify what each of the letters represents in the following formula, including units used. As you should already know, P is for pressure measured in pascals, F is for force measured in newtons, and A is for area measured in meter square. Cars need effective brakes when driving down a hill. A brake system in a car uses two pistons, a small piston with a small area and a large piston with a large area. Braking causes the small piston to move with a force of 20 newtons. The small piston has an area of 0.008 meters square. Show that the pressure of this piston is 2,500 pascals. From our equation above, we know that the pressure is equal to the force divided by the area Putting those numbers in, indeed gives me 2,500. The pressure is the same in all parts of the braking system. The large piston has an area of 0.04 meters square. Calculate the force applied by the large piston when the braking occurs. So we know that our pressure is equal to our force divided by our area. Since we're looking for force, we need to solve this for force. We can do so by multiplying both sides by the area. Putting our pressure from above and our new area in gives me 100 newtons. A car is moving along a flat road with a speed of 20 meters per second. It comes to a stop four seconds later. Calculate the acceleration of this car over these four seconds. Acceleration is our change in velocity over our duration. Our change in velocity is 20 meters per second and our duration is four giving us 5 meters per second per second. The car and driver have a mass of 1000 kilograms together. Calculate the force required to stop the car. We're given the equation that our force is equal to our mass times acceleration. We know the mass is 1000 and we know the acceleration is 5, giving us 5000 newtons. Explain the direction of this force. 
The force is directed against the velocity of the car, providing a backwards acceleration that reduces the car's velocity. And we're done.